So out of curiosity, did you know that the Catholic Church actually knows the names of the three wise men? They were Balthazar, Melchior, and Casper. So I thought this was interesting. I just learned this this year just because it shows that there are things that were preserved by the church that weren't necessarily in scripture. And speaking of scripture, I learned this year too that Hanukkah is celebrated by the Jews for the celebration of the rededication of the temple after the Maccabean revolt, which is all described and accounted for in the books of Maccabees. So the Catholic Church had these seven books called the Apocrypha in the Bible, and during the Protestant Reformation, the Protestants removed them from the Bible, saying that it too much indicated that it was by works, that we were saved, um, there was evidence of purgatory in these books, all of these different things that attributed to doctrine that the Protestants disagreed with, so they pulled these seven books out. Now what doesn't make sense to me about that is the fact that Christ himself was a Jew, so he believed in the Maccabees, I mean, he, all of this stuff all took place, and for the fact that we come from Judaic roots, doesn't even make sense that we would then turn away such a major piece of literature that is needed for a huge part of the Jewish tradition. So when we look at the Catholic faith and see that they still have the Apocrypha, that says something about how we've held on to those Judaic Christian roots from where we actually originated. The church is full of history that's outside of the Bible. So during this Christmas season, I mean, there is a ton of like anxiety around traveling. I mean, just today, a two and a half hour car ride for my husband and I took four hours. And it's like, how do we stay calm during that? There are people flying by us going way too fast. And it's like, they could spin out and hit us at any moment. Um, and it's like, you know, praying the Hail Mary. It's like turning to God. And it's interesting to me too, like these discussions that come forward at the dinner table, allow them to cultivate faith, you know? One of them that we were talking about today was about the cultures of Catholicism, how like in American Catholicism, we have all these instances of like, the biggest thing that's highlighted is the reception of the Eucharist. That's an American thing. When you go to Mexico, theirs revolves around Mary. Like every, every culture like cultivates their Catholicism to reflect what's held most important in that particular culture and what's more important to Americans than food, you know? Um, so just something to think about when you're going to the table, like, you know, doing the sign of the cross at the end of the prayer. Maybe you're not, you know, maybe you're one of the only Catholics in the room. Like just doing those simple things that kind of give that external expression, you know? Our Christmas decorations are finally up you know, Christmas Eve, and now we're going to leave them up until January 6th. The things that make Christian, like the Christian Christmas a reality instead of giving into the secular world of what it is. Um, and then finally, I've talked about this before in like past videos, but the 12 Days of Christmas, that song. I haven't actually even heard it on the radio yet this year, which kind of makes me sad because it is one of my favorites. Um, growing up, they had like, we had these little bells that dictated each one. But it's been classified by Snopes as false about what I'm about to talk about, but the idea behind it's still great. So when you listen to this song, just thinking about the different things that each day could stand for, you know? First day, partridge in a pear tree. Jesus in a manger. Perfect. Two turtle doves. Old Testament, New Testament. Three French hens. Faith, hope, and love. The three supernatural virtues. Four calling birds. Four gospels. Five golden rings. That's the Pentateuch. That's the first five books of the Bible. Six geese a-laying, six days of creation. Seven swans a-swimming are the seven sacraments. So, you know, you're looking at matrimony, baptism, all those different things. Um, eight maids of milking are the eight beatitudes. Nine ladies dancing are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Ten lords a-leaping are the Ten Commandments. Eleven pipers piping, the eleven faithful apostles. And twelve drummers drumming are points of doctrine in the Apostles' Creed. So thinking about these different things that the Catholic Church gives to us, and um, you know the whole deal that Snopes said is false is that this was written by the church in in the whole era of the Church of England when it was outlawed to practice the Catholic faith, and so it was for children to remember these things. And if you like look at all of these and really compare the analogies, they really do line up. Like 
you look at Maids of Milken and like the beauty that's in the Beatitudes and things like that. So, um, so just continuing to draw out our Catholic faith and our Christian love in this time and just acknowledging all the history. I mean, learning about Balthazar, Melchior, and Casper, like that totally blew my mind. I had no clue that we knew that. And like, we learned it when a priest friend of ours came over to bless our house. And now we have, you know, 2017 and C and B on our door to signify that this house has been blessed. So God bless you all in this happy, merry Christmas season um, or Hanukkah. If that's what you're celebrating, that's great too. We're all here for understanding. So I'm just glad that you could tune in. I hope you have safe travels and great to see you here. Hope to see you again next week Sunday. God bless.